G'day, how you doing? Adam here from Poseidon Racing with another video in the series which is the ultimate beginner's guide to Z Run. Everything that you need to know going from zero experience, zero horses, to building up your stable and of course winning as many races as possible as soon as possible. That's the good stuff. That's what we want to do is win those races. And in this video, that's exactly what we're going to look at. Our initial early strategy, a couple of videos ago, we talked about entering our first Griffin. In the previous video, we discussed the differences between paid and free racing. And in this video, we're going to look at our early racing strategy. So you've entered a Griffin. Now we need to go and have an assess of that Griffin and see what our next step is going to be as far as racing is concerned. Let's go full screen and check it out. Okay, so there's many, many tools, Z Run tools that you can use to assess how your horse went in its first race. At this point, the odds are really, really important. So the odds of your horse winning, and I'll show you how to look that up on Know Your Horses, is currently really, really important. There are rumors that the odds are going to change in the future. When that happens, I'll jump on, do a refresher video, and we will discuss the new ways of assessing our horses. But at the moment, odds are really important. So that is what we will be focusing on. So if you come here to knowyourhorses.com, knowyourhorses.com, you'll get this page here. And I'm going to type in one of my horses, which was Buck Wild. We had a look at Buck Wild a couple of videos back, and he's a pretty good example of trying to manage your horse through these races, even if they are not great, even if that horse is not great. It's much easier, obviously, if you have an absolute monster horse with $4 odds, and it goes into the paid races, and we can just start winning. It's a little bit more difficult with those borderline horses and the bad horses. So you come to a page like this after you type in your brand new horse's name, and of course, I'm assuming that it's already run in one Griffin race. And if we scroll down here, what we really want is you'll have just one race listed, more than likely your Griffin. So don't take too much notice of these races up here for now. This is my Griffin right down the bottom. And you can see G for Griffin here. And the name of the race, it was a 1200 meter. So a sprint race, rather short race. And you can see in that particular race, that my horse, Buck Wild, was $7.40 odds. And if I click on the race here itself, the hyperlink, we can go and have a look at that race and the different horses. Now, if I had $7.40 odds, that's not great for a Z2. It would be okay if this race had a lot of Z1s and Z2s in it, but it's got 9, 10, 8, 7, 8, 6, 7, of course, myself is the only two, 6, 4, 4, 5. It's not the greatest odds. It's okay. Look, anything under $8 is, is promising in a Griffin, absolutely. But if you get $7 or $8 and there's two or three Z1s in there, then you really start rubbing your hands together. If you get $7 or $8 and it's against, you know, Z50s or Z100s mostly, then maybe not so promising. And that's something we need to weigh up. With this particular Z2, $7.40 is a bit iffy. So we need to be a little bit careful moving forward. If I hit the back button here and go back to the original view. Okay, so we got $7.40 in the Griffin. We're a bit, oh, but it was a sprint. Maybe Buck Wild here, this Z2, could be a great distance runner. 2,000 meters, 2, 2, 2, 4, 2, 6. So what I've done here is I've, I've sort of taken a little bit of a risk, I suppose, because what I could do with this borderline horse is I could wait until a free race popped up that was 2000 or above in his class and then enter him in that particular free race, which would then kind of creep up on it. If I entered that free race and he was still like sevens or eights or $9 odds, I would know that well, this free race is probably not the highest quality. So putting him in a paid race is probably going to result in 20s or 30 or 40 to 1 or $40 odds, which is not what we, what we really want, to be honest. Now, before we jump right into that, let's talk a little bit about classes. 
and I'll leave the link to both Know Your Horses website and the Z Run Racing classes in the description below. So basically when you race your Griffin, you have no points rating yet, okay? But, okay, so you have no points racing, rating when you race a Griffin and these are the class categories for class five, zero to 20, then four is 21 to 40, three is 41 to 60, two is 61 to 80 and class one is 81 plus. This is also likely to change in the future at which point I will update the video. Now, the Z numbers have a base rating. Z1 to 4 start with a base rating of 57. Okay, and if we look up here, 57 would start you in class 3. Then you have uh, Z5 to 9 with a base rating of 37. Now, keep in mind, every horse races their first race in the Griffin. Depending where you finish will depend on what class you are, but the base rating of 5 to 9, 37, sort of puts you somewhere around class four, and then 10 plus starts with a base rating of 17, which is likely to have you somewhere around about class five. Now that varies slightly depending on your result. As we scroll down, you'll see that for first place, you get plus four points, and then three for second, two for third, one for fourth, and then zero, 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 zero for five through eight, and then nine is minus one, 10 is minus two, 11 is minus 3 and 12 is minus 4 and that matters because in the first race you might have you might have a, a Z10 with 17 points and they come first so he's already got 21 he'll be bumped straight into class 4. Now of course losing that first race as a 10 plus and losing points won't matter terribly because you'll be in class 5 anyway because 17 was the base rating and if you go minus 4 you'll be 13 you'll still be in class 5. Okay but if you look at 5 to 9's at 37 it's a little bit similar that puts you in class 4 but if you win you'll get plus 4 you'll go to 41 you'll be in class 3 and if you lose you'll still be in class four, but with a slightly lower points rating. And as you go through more races and win or lose, you'll slowly climb or descend that class ladder. As I said, this may change in the future and I'll update you then. But it just matters in that first race. Based on your base rating plus your result will mean which type of class you are entering. And if we come back just to our, our horse, oh, another free race, am I going to Let's just hit refresh to see what gates are up. Gone already. I thought I was going to jag another free race there whilst we were playing. If I click on my stable here, and you can do this when you've run that first race with your Griffin, you can see these points ratings. These are your class points. 62, and the, the pinkish colour means class 2. Um, the brownish colour is 3, and you can see those points would align with that. Steve, Stephen Curry here is in five with that green in, in the 16 there. And there's class one in that purple with anything over 80. So once you've raced that first Griffin, you can come and click on your stable icon and you'll see what class points you're on. Then you know what free races to look out for because if your odds were not great, so this is where the strategy comes in. Let's lay that out now. If you enter your first Griffin and your odds are say, eight, nine, 10 or above, then the very next race I would suggest is to do another race, to look for a free race in your class that is a variation from the distance that you just ran. So for example, with Buck Wild here, let's assume that he got some pretty ordinary odds like 10 to one in this 1200. And then he would have been in, I think, class three. Yes, he was. You can see the next race above was class three. So I should have, in the perfect strategy, I went into a paid race because I was impatient. But what I probably should have done is to wait for a long distance free race in class, um, yeah, free race in class three, long distance, and enter that and then gauge his strength by that next race. Okay, so if that next race... He's in a free race. We know that free races are weaker in general. So if he is not sort of under eight again, if he's not sevens or sixes or somewhere around eight or under, then I probably don't want to enter him in any paid races 
at that longer distance in class three or two or above either. So I can sort of cross that out. I say, right, well, that free race, it looks to be fairly weak and you can check the horse classes and how many wins they have and get a bit of a gauge if it was a weak or a strong free race. But you can get a bit of a gauge there and even just a rule of thumb, if you enter a free race and the horse is around eights or nines or tens, you know, it's probably gonna be, it's not always, but it's probably going to be 15s or 20s in a, in a, in a paid race. You can always test one paid race um, if you like, just to see. And if you are going to enter a paid race, make sure you stick to your own class, okay? And also enter the lowest entry fee races first. Again, like the free races, they have the weakest fields. And again, as you move up to like the $2.50 races, as opposed to the $20 races, the $2.50 races will generally be slightly weaker in quality. So slowly moving up until you know that you've got a monster because you want to creep up on that. Well, in, in my strategy, I feel like it's best to creep up on that. So, okay, let's lay that strategy out. Let's try and outline that, what we might do now. So we've entered the Griffin, our odds are not great. It's a 1200 race, it's a short race. So next we're looking for a free race in our class, in my case, class three, at maybe long or mid distance to test that off and maybe give it a big green tick or X as if, you know. So let's say we go in the long race, it's a free race, it's long, and we're 11 to one. We think, well, it's probably not a really strong field. 11s is not great. If I enter a long paid race, I'm probably going to be 15s or 20s. So let's cross that off as being a paid option. That's not a paid option. Okay, so we cross long distance, probably not a paid option. Now you could go and test 2,000 meters, 2, 2, 2, 4, 2, 6, to be absolutely sure that your horse is no good at all of those. Now there are circumstances where a horse can be significantly better at 2.4 and not very good at 2.2. But it's very rare. So what I tend to do is look, if I've gone short in the Griffin, I'll then go long in a free if the horse doesn't look great in the Griffin. And then if it doesn't look great in that one, I might go mid distance in a free race as well. And if it doesn't look great in that, I'm starting to think, maybe I should sell this horse whilst it's only got three runs under its belt because it's unlikely to be any kind of champion in those other distances in between. I, I'm not saying it's impossible because I have sold horses before that I thought weren't very good and they turned out to be pretty good, all right? But it's unlikely that you've got an absolute monster if it's not showing signs of talent at at least one short or at least one mid or at least one long. Once you've got the short mid long covered and you're sort of not getting any signs of talent, chances are your horse doesn't have t race talent that suits the current ecosystem. Keep that in mind, I'll explain what I mean with that at the end of the video. Stick around for that because that's very important also. Okay, so if you've got a horse, not very good, test it at short, mid, long in free races, and once you start getting some odds that are around six, seven, eights, nines in frees, in a free race, then you can maybe, what I would do then, let's say this horse, Buck Wild, tried it in the Griffin, wasn't in overly impressed with the result or the odds. And then I tried it in a long free race at 2-2, wasn't overly impressed there, but then I brought it back to 1600 in the mid distance, 16, sort of 14, 16, 18-ish, and he was getting $6 in a free race. Well, what I would do, rather than jump straight to a paid, I might try and focus in on that free race and try and enter another couple of free races just to see if he holds those six, seven dollar odds at that, at that particular free race distance. And if he does, then I would move up and maybe enter a $2.50 at that distance. And if he's still around sevens, eights, I'm thinking you beauty, this guy could be profitable in this little niche. And I might enter two or three of those $2.50 races. And then if it's still pretty good, I might bump up to the fives. And if, if at the five dollars, he's still eights or nines or tens, pretty good, that's okay. I might go to the 10 or the 15. And you can slowly build your confidence to see what your horse looks like. Now, the only variation on that is when you maybe have an absolute monster. 
an absolute monster. If you're getting odds below $5 in your Griffin, well, you can start sort of thinking that you might have something really, really nice. It doesn't mean that you absolutely do because the Griffin might be significantly weak, a significantly weak race. And when you enter the next paid race, you might be 15 to one and, and that dream is sort of erased pretty quickly. But if you do have an absolute monster, so you're always best going relatively slow, testing the waters and incrementally moving up through the free races into the low grade paids, into the higher grade paids and then onwards. However, if you have an absolute monster, as I said in the Griffin, $3.50, $4.50 odds, something like that, then you probably don't want to race that in too many free races because you might enter the, the class system, for example, um, where are we? At class four, okay? And then if you start just entering and, and going up incrementally in the free races, you might go win, win, win and add 12 points on and you might be straight up to three. Whereas you could have got those three wins in a $5 race and, and got those points and they weren't for nothing, if you know what I mean. Okay, so if you've got an absolute monster, the risk to reward can be to try that monster initially in a cheap entry paid race rather than a free race. So if you've got a horse that's like $4 odds, $5 odds, $6 odds, you might hone in on that distance. Let's say you went to the Griffin was a 1600 and you got $5.50 odds. It doesn't really matter at this point if you win or lose, but then you enter into class four, you might look for a class four paid race with a $5 entry fee or even a $2.50 entry fee. Enter that, and if you've still got six or $7 odds, then bump up to the $5. And then if you've still got $7 odds or $8 odds, go up to the $10 and really try and milk that early class variation or deviation if you like because you've got a monster it might be on its way to class one but in the early days you've been classed into class four or five okay so you may as well use those early races to try and win some prize money now the other one thing that i want to mention as far as early race strategy is if you do have a really great horse producing six or seven dollar odds and it happens to not win any of its first five six or ten races it doesn't mean necessarily that it's bad. The odds are really, really significant in predicting the future of that horse. It might just mean you've got a slow starter and I would focus in on where you're getting the best odds and I think those wins will eventually come. Okay, so keep that in mind too. And even if you come last the first three or four times and you've gone from class three down to class four or five, that can be great too, because then all of a sudden, if you've got this great horse with five or six dollar or seven dollar odds, when you start winning, there might be a lot of scope for you to win through class five up to class four before you get to three. You might never get to class one. If you've got a horse that likes to come first and last, then you might end up staying down around classes four and five, which is really great too. So let's just wrap that up. If you've got a horse that looks a bit suspect, getting you know, larger odds in the Griffins, let's say nines and above, then your best strategy, in my opinion, not, not any sort of financial advice, just my opinion from my race experience, is to look for a free race event in your class, which is a variation from the distance that, was, that you first entered. So if you entered a short race, try a mid or a long in a free race in your class, not up class, in your class. Okay, remember those class points. And then depending on the result of that free race, if you happen to get $6 or really short odds, you might be able to test the waters with a low entry paid race. If you're still getting 10s or 11s or 20s or 40 to ones, $40 odds, then maybe try that last distance grade. So if you've entered short and mid, then find a free race in a longer race, like a 2000, a 2224, even 26. And again, reassess after that. If you're getting short odds there, then maybe try a low entry fee paid race at those longer distances. If you're still getting long distances, well, you might want to hang up, hang up the reins for that horse for the time being until we see what the future holds. Now, you will have some choices at that point. Do you want to just sell that horse or do you want to move on, uh, sorry, do you want to sell that horse or do you want to maybe hold it 
and maybe the game opens up some areas or aspects that might suit your horse. For example, there are horses that are winner, uh, not winners. They might have run 100 races and not won, but they always finish like second through to sixth or seventh. They're very consistent in that upper end bracket, but they don't tend to get the, the nose across the line first. Well, if Z happens to open up sort of a single, single elimination knockout tournament where you start with you know, a round of 32 races and then half those horses move forward to the round of 16 and half move forward to the next round, eight, and then up and up and up and up to a final race of 12, and you've got a horse that never wins but is always top six, that might be an exceptional horse in that style of a knockout tournament. We don't know if that will come but you will have some decisions to make as to do you hold and hope the game opens up in a favourable way or do you sell based on the current game and try and get another horse that suits the game slightly better. In an upcoming video we will touch on that on a deeper level of where the game might go and how it might open up for those average or less than average horses. That's all we've got for you today. If you love the content give me a thumbs up, that would be awesome. And if you enjoy sports-based NFT games, then hit the subscribe button. You're going to love the content here. Thanks again for watching along. I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.